Hi, so I'm Isabella Mascarenias and I am Vice President of Grassroots Education and Social Impact at RS Group. You're very much in engineering because I see you all over my LinkedIn <laughs> very often. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what you do in engineering. So, um, Confession, I'm not an engineer myself. Um, however, I have been in engineering and technology for, gosh, around about 12 years now. Um, I got into it initially because I was working at one of the world's largest engineering institutions um, and just developed a massive passion for it. Um, I personally don't have the technical skills or mindset to be an engineer, but I'm a massive people person and interpersonal skills, communication skills, really, really important for engineers to develop those around the edges of the technical side of things so that they can flourish in the workplace and convince people about these technical projects that they're working on. So that's kind of my involvement into the industry. Um, but yeah, it's fascinating and I love it. I'm curious to know what it was about engineering that really got you uh kind of sucked in well uh, i mean hi i'm indian so a lot of my family are engineers um of course for us that's something that you're told about the whole way through growing up doctors lawyers engineers accountants um but it never occurred to me as something that i would be able to do or want to go into um but yeah i i think why not? engineering for why not i'm not mathematically minded at all um i'm my strengths are language people um those that kind of side of things um but i think i just i got really passionate about engineering when i was working at that institution because i saw the impact that it can have on so many different world issues um that you know lots of people fret about and go oh my god what are we going to do about that engineering has the answer to so many of those issues and i am fiercely passionate about justice about human rights um about social inequalities and engineering can sit behind so many of their solutions for those issues climate change sustainability the list goes on right totally i mean the book that i've just brought out engineers making a difference really yeah. does... <laughs> thank you well done really does um really does shine a light on the fact that engineers are really influential absolutely and for a long time um especially you know over the course of my career i don't think engineers have ever been given the recognition they deserve um, no, i think you're right and so you know, it's 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 fascinating to um, chat with someone who sees the importance of what engineers do on a much wider scale. And yeah. to hear you say, well, I was just never really mathematically inclined, which is why I didn't think engineering was for me, because there's like a massive gap there. Yeah, and, and actually, I mean... It's fascinating seeing how this role has evolved because I, I used to do that over there and now I do it in a, you know, one of the world's largest online distributors of components and whatnot. Um, and, and yeah, it is a niche. You're absolutely right. You know, that there is so much fantastic technical theory taught to engineers, budding engineers, but all those critical skills that go around the edges of that, they don't get it. And and so a lot of them, well, you and I know there's skill surveys that are done all the time uh, about gaps in their in their abilities and their knowledge. And those are always the gaps that that come out that they need help with. And no one's really doing it. Um, so, yeah, it's funny how those those side skills of mine seem to have been the thing that can help to to gap those, uh, fill those gaps. Yeah, I mean. I, I basically summarise engineering as having a bit of a PR problem. Mm. Mm, yeah. And what are we doing about it? Well, I mean, I, this is where I think um, actually 
talking more about what they do, celebrating their achievements, um, having initiatives that uh, amplify their work, that, that show what they do to the wider society. But it, it really, I think it's got to go the whole way through the entire system, right? All the way from education up into the workplace and, and throughout the life cycle of engineers to help to amplify the reach of what they're doing. Yeah. And, and because have you found in your career that engineers want to stay um, logical or put another way, um, it's almost like engineers and physicists and STEM, like mathematically related subjects, mm -hmm. don't want to get warm and fuzzy. In fact, uh, there's a philosopher, Alan Watts, yes. and he talked about the prickly and the gooey. Um, mm -hmm. Prickly, I would almost assign to engineering, and yes. gooey, I would kind of assign to arts and, you know, creative. Okay. And he was like, why can't we have prickly goo and gooey prickles? Well, yeah. And do you know, actually... It's an interesting one because, you know, we go and do a lot of kind of um, career talks and activities and workshops and things with young engineers and, and student engineers. Um, and that's the bit that really gets them excited when you talk about engineering is, you know, they're, they're there doing these little projects and little activities in the labs and things like that. But actually that wider perspective of this is the impact you're going to have and can have that's what gets them excited like so many of gen z that we work with you know they're worried right they have a lot of issues that previous generations have set up for them to deal with and a lot of them are feeling a bit kind of um concerned helpless how do i make a difference how can i help with that and then when you tell them actually these are some of the amazing projects that we see coming out of engineers that's the bit where they're like penny drop okay I, I can make a difference and I'm already on the right path yeah. I love that I love that penny drop moment <laughs> yeah so I feel like things are changing um but you've been doing this a long time um are things changing yeah I think they are um it depends specifically which area you mean, because there's there's a lot of issues, right? I mean, there's there's the issue that we've just discussed that not enough people actually understand what engineering is and what it can do. But then there's also the big diversity issues within um, the profession as well. And those, I think, are changing, but slowly. Um, I think the perceptions of engineering are starting to change but slowly you're starting to see it in more and more places. And even just down to things like, you know, interviews on the media, in the media and um, engineers appearing on chat shows and things like that, you know, you're starting to see a bit more of that, which is really encouraging. But I still think there's a long way to go on the diversity side of things, because that to me is one of the big underpinning problems is that not enough young people from all sorts of walks of life are hearing about this as an opportunity as a career option and that there's different routes into it as well because I think a lot of people still think you have to have to have to go to university to do engineering and there are all these other cool routes into it now which maybe aren't known about or um, promoted enough for them to be as accessible as they're supposed to be if that makes sense. Yeah I mean we are so completely and utterly aligned like I just um I I lived through a lot of what was lacking in engineering. You know, when you're a new graduate and you've got all this knowledge and expertise, and but no confidence and yeah. no experience, awesome. you kind of find yourself in the industry and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm surrounded by people that don't look like me. Um, it can really uh, be very scary and discouraging, um, and that's kind of why I wrote the book because it's uh you know I 
just don't want anyone to go through an engineering education and then not use their skills um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. because they don't see anyone like themselves um and uh i do want to sort of like dispel all the 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 outdated stereotypes of what engineering is yeah um I have to say kudos for the people that you featured in your book because they were so wonderfully diverse and I think that was one of my favourite things about it. Thank you. Well, I know that Navjot really speaks very highly of you. Um, yeah, he's and, amazing. And other engineers that I have met along the way who are also really helping to promote diversity. Hmm. Um, what do you want to see in terms of change like all your efforts all your experience in your career so far like where is it all heading this is a big question I don't know that I know the answer if I'm honest at this point in <laughs> um that progress that we talked about you know when I first got into this I think we were at nine percent of engineers in the UK were female um or, or women and now we're at 16 <clears> percent <throat> which is progress I would love to get to a point where we don't have to do these drives around getting specific types of people into the industry because it would just be recognised and acknowledged as an exciting career that can make a genuine difference and that young people know about it, that it's taught in secondary schools. And it's because that's part of the biggest problem is it? it's not even on their radar. It's not put on their radar. So for it to be integrated into that whole education journey um, and careers talks and all of that stuff, that would be the ideal, right? Because then if, if all kids know about it and all young people know about it, then you shouldn't have to have all these diversity drives going on because it's a level playing field and everyone's had the information that this is an option for you. Yeah, and, you know, before we started recording, we were talking about, like, teachers striking and things like that mm -hmm. I really do um see engineering as an opportunity to actually learn differently yes totally you know engineers enjoy being practical and experimentation and prototyping and all of that and that isn't necessarily something that's encouraged in schools no and I totally agree I um it frustrates me greatly that our curriculum is so behind the times I think you know and and fair play to them industry moves at such a pace it's hard for schools to keep up with all of the all that's going on in the world of work um but I totally agree with you like I think it, it that whole curriculum is essentially crafted around somebody's ability to suck up some information and regurgitate it in a particular way and there are so many different types of thinking that that just does not suit and work for. I was one of them. I'm one of those people that I have to do things. I have to do things to learn. I can't just sit there and listen to someone telling me about it and then feel all excited. I, can't, I need to go and experience things. Um, so, yeah, I think there needs to be a much better blend of how we teach these things in schools. Yeah, and less of a snobbery around being able to work in a very conventional way or study in a very conventional way yes. like there's nothing wrong with learning as an apprentice or technician. absolutely not yeah you know, I, it might i don't know if it might be a bit like swearing to some people but oh my god if apprenticeships were on offer when i was growing up i would absolutely have gone down that route i personally went to university because it was the dumb thing it's what you did I was miserable as century. I hated it. it. It was not for me and for a whole load of reasons. But an apprenticeship would have been absolutely incredible for me because I'd have been doing doing the do and doing the learning on the side. And that works so much better for so many people. 
I'm with you. I mean, I went down a very academic route and I'm not in engineering today, but Mm. after interviewing the apprentices for my book, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I had done an apprenticeship, I'd probably still be in engineering. Yeah. And I think the other really remarkable thing about it is that university we know is not, it's not accessible for everybody. It, you know, it's, it's flipping expensive and That's the other amazing thing that I think about apprenticeships is, you know, you can earn while you're learning, while you're doing, and you're not going to come out with all this debt afterwards. So I think it's opened up a whole um, whole world, world of opportunities for people that might previously have felt excluded. So on this whole kind of learning while you live kind of thing, um, what have you witnessed uh, in terms of opportunities for women? Because women uh, have multifacets. Um, you know, they can be mothers, they can be wives, they can be career women, they can be all of those things at the same time. Have you seen a change of approach within the engineering industry in terms of? supporting women oh that's an interesting question um because i because i don't directly work in engineering i don't know that i can answer that in all fairness um but what i have seen is a massive uptick in women engineers making engineering more accessible for other women if that makes sense (laughs) so a lot of women-led initiatives um you know, teaching women coding skills, for example, who might want to have a career change or, um, you know, short courses in things to pique an interest so that, you know, instead of going and studying an open university course or whatever it is, they've got some insight into it before they go and do it. Uh, I've seen a lot of that, but I don't know how much um, engineering companies are doing, to be fair. Um I'm going to say something fairly controversial, um, Shani, but I think that a, a lot of things that companies do are p- particularly around women. They they don't always acknowledge that not all women are created equal, right? What you know, what might work for this lady over here might not work for this lady over here, and yeah, I I think that's where we need to come into these things because we have those experiences, we can help. Um, but it's difficult for companies to do one thing that fits everybody and helps everybody. Yeah, I mean, what is it that needs to change? Because um, in all the conversations I've had on this podcast, I really hear time and time again that... Um, there needs to be more flexibility in in expectations um, from companies. And if big companies can be more flexible and supportive of women and all the different roles that they can play, Mm. um, that would really massively change. It would have a societal impact. Yes. So... You're at RS Components. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, first of all, it would be unfair to ask you what the whole of industry does. But like, have you learned anything at RS Components or are you driving any initiatives that you think will change the landscape for women in engineering? Uh, so f- the first thing to say is that the vast majority of the work that my team do um, at RS is external facing. So we work with uh, young engineers, essentially between the ages of 16 and 30. Um, and we do all sorts of things to help them to develop um, technical application skills, because theory and application are very different, right? Um, employability skills and cool opportunities to help them to become more employable around what they do. So that that we do most of our stuff externally, but we're very cognizant of these issues um, that we've talked about. And one of the things that we do is we have special programs for women in engineering societies. Um, so we work with loads of gorgeous student societies across the UK who are female led 
Um, and we help them with things like confidence building, with how to do great networking, with how do you cope with if you're the only woman in the room and you're pitching an idea, how do you get your voice heard? Um, mentoring, reverse mentoring schemes, um, helping them to set them up within their societies. There's all sorts of things that we do that are specifically tailored to the issues that young women will face going into the industry. Similarly, we do lots of stuff that's specifically targeted about increasing the representation of global majority young people in the profession because um, there are so few black and brown engineers in the UK and it's not OK because we're, we're designing technologies that have to suit everyone. Why isn't everyone around the table to make sure that they work for everyone? So we we're very cognizant of the kind of underlying big issues in diversity in the profession and we try to tailor programmes to those particular audiences to try and do our little part to fix it. Yeah, I, I, I do see that RS Components is extremely uh, supportive and um, active in increasing diversity and inclusion in engineering. Mm -hmm. why, why do RS Components and you have that kind of purpose? Yeah, okay. So the first thing, we, we rebranded not so long ago. We are officially known as RS, RS Group now um, and just RS because uh, we I, lots of people don't know, but we have a whole family of brands underneath RS Group. It's just that RS Components is the one that everybody's always heard of. Um, so, yeah, we're just known as RS now. Um, and why we care about it so much is, you know, it's an interesting one because we're not an engineering business. Everybody thinks that RS is an engineering company. We're not, we're a distributor. Um, and we are an omni-channel distributor. So we have shops, we have apps, we have um, online, you know, there's any number of ways that you can purchase from us. But why it matters to us is because we do occupy a really prominent space in the engineering, technology and manufacturing industry. So we stop gosh, about 750,000 products from over 2,500 suppliers who are all predominantly engineering technology companies. And who are all our customers, Shani? All engineering manufacturing businesses. So I like to very professionally describe us as the meat in the engineering sandwich. <laughs> We're not an engineering business, but we service the industry. And so it's really important to us that we're doing our part within that industry to shift the dial and help to fix some of those issues that we all know are out there and we have a, a duty to do our part that's so interesting yeah because um it's kind of like a bird's eye view um yeah. is there a skills gap because it's not just about the lack of women in the industry are we churning out enough engineers in the uk I don't know that we are. Um, in fact, I know that we aren't churning that out enough in terms of the need that there is in industry. Um, but the other thing about it is that I, this is going to sound awful, but I think that the quality of engineers that we're churning out isn't quite hitting the mark of what employers are wanting to see. Um, which is why teams like mine exist. So I'm not complaining because I have a job because of it. <laughs> But that is why we exist, is to help them to bridge that gap between where the university or the college thinks that their responsibility ends and where the expectations of the employer begin. Does that make sense? So you're not saying that universities and apprenticeships are churning out engineers that are not up to scratch. You're saying that we are not developing our engineers to be well-rounded they may have the technical skills Absolutely. but they don't have all the other skills that are also important for industry yeah exactly that yeah and we know that from you know so many different pieces of research that have been done by various PEIs like you know everyone knows it that there are big gaps in these young engineers when they're coming out of university someone needs to help them with that <laughs> you know they deserve that um you don't know what you don't know when you hit the workplace so 
having you know a nice friendly little team that are quite informal and will have a chat with you and will tailor things to what you need or what your student society needs or help you with your student projects or help you with your pitches when you're when you're telling your tutors about that how do you make it digestible all of those things they're clueless about the majority of them and it I think that's really sad because you're almost setting them up to fail they've got all this great technical theory and then you just you just go like that off you go into the world and there's a whole heap of stuff that they need to know yeah totally I've got it I've had a penny dropping moment yeah Um, yeah (laughs) so um I'm kind of having a day that is all about leapfrogging um Mm. and this idea that you know when we were laying down telephone cables uh you know a few decades later um countries and continents that didn't even have a telephone network cable network just went straight past all of that and got wi-fi phones and mobiles and you know there was no landlines in sight Mm. Um, we are going through a digital age. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of big engineering machinery is going digital. Um, what can you leave us with in terms of advice for anyone who's thinking, I wonder if engineering's for me? Um, you know, because they will have to go and get skilled up. But can you give us any um, jewels of wisdom, piles of wisdom, um, for what engineers need to try and develop for themselves to be even better engineers one day? Oh, I had a really interesting conversation with a young man the other day who was studying engineering and it and actually don't worry I will get to the answer of your question in a second um but he had gone into engineering because his family wanted him to it wasn't his personal choice and so I was having a chat with him and I was like well what are your passions and he was talking about music and he was talking about back home in Ghana and he was talking about x y and z and I'd I had to just say to him you do know that engineering could serve any one of those interests of yours and he went what do you mean and I was like I know loads of engineers that have set up programs that are benefiting people back home I know loads of engineers that have set up you know little solutions to making music more accessible for people who can't hear and things like that you know um so I think that's something that it's really important for people to remember is actually you know be cognizant of the world around you be cognizant of your passions um of issues that you're particularly uh bothered by because those are the things that can then make you have a serious impact through your work um and help you to be a bit more of a rounded person as well you know sometimes we live in these little silos in these little bubbles where we don't look up and look at the world around us and what we can do about it even just as one little person um but being one little person with the power of engineering behind you like that's our whole turbo pack put on the back of your vehicle there isn't it (laughs) um so for me I think that that's the thing is actually telling people you you can make a difference with this stuff just find your problems see them around you you know think about what you can apply your skills to and I think that that would actually make more passionate engineers as well yeah you know what I mean yeah totally I mean Isabella it's just been so great talking to you today because I feel like we've um zoomed out Hmm. and we've taken a good old look at engineering from a from a bird's eye view um not just because engineers can have a massive impact mm. globally. Like, I, I'm not trying to big it up, but, like, literally, if you're building... No, no, they really actually can. Big it up. Do it. <laughs> I mean, engineers, when I think about the work they've done on sanitation, sewerage systems, uh, building bridges that millions of people cross every year, you know, uh, it's not 
it's not exaggerating to say that engineers really can make such a massive difference to our lives, all of our lives. Um, the underpinning infrastructure of our whole societies, right? People just don't realise it. Totally. But I think what I take away from our conversation is this idea that we need to stop um, getting focused on the detail Hmm. and yeah and kind of realize that we are doing this for much bigger reasons yes what comes with that is not just technical skills which can often turn people off engineering yes (laughs) but to also say if you have other skills beyond maths and physics you may also be extremely useful in engineering too absolutely right yeah yeah, I mean, look at me. I have no, not a technical skill to my name, but I'm valuable to engineers, I'd like to think. So I've been told. So, <laughs> so yeah, you don't even have to have all of that stuff to make a difference to engineering as an industry. Bring some of that other stuff into it. It's really important. I love that. I love <laughs> that as a lasting message. And I, I'm sure that anyone that hasn't considered uh engineering as being something for them will definitely give it a shot i think between you and me what we're doing um within the engineering industry is hopefully convincing people that um you don't have to be the big geek that people absolutely have, not that people have assumed it to be so yeah, thank quite you right. All right, lovely to talk to you, and congratulations on your book. It's beautiful. I've um, got my list, my list of things to go through and read. But yeah, lo- looking forward to it. It's been amazing to hear your experiences and your story, and and thank you for sharing with us. Today. No, absolute pleasure. Thank you for thinking of me.